today to meet you from Bushlapel Centurion. Just quickly going to show you guys how to set up the new 2023 Bushlapel Kiever. Uh, it's a two sleeper with a seating area inside, so we're going to run through the specs on it quickly as well. Um, but yeah, with regards to setup, we've always start with leveling the caravan, so we've got one jack on already. So we're going to do the second one. So, basically, release there. Make sure you don't put this bracket on the roof and lose it. There's a safety pin that holds in place. Just release it, get out your jack. It works on the same mechanism, it stores on the top. There. And then you basically just jack, and you can use them as jacks and stabilizers. So they work for both. While we're busy with this side, with regards to the jacking point or the, the labeling, uh, waterfall point up there, there's your 220 caravan inlet. So a 10 meter extension that comes standard with the unit. Very important part on the water system, your breather tap. Don't forget to open your breather tap when, while using any water uh, application. So in camp, basically, open up the water. When you're filling the water tank, open up the, the breather. And that's it. So from there, we start with the roof. And then usually we do a side bed. This one doesn't have a side bed. Then we do the front bed. And then we do the awning. So I'm going to start with the sequence as it goes. So roof first. There's the rear latches. You can start from the front or the rear, it doesn't really make a difference. Just put your clips back in place so you don't lose them. Okay, so that's the rear. The front has four latches, so two on each side. This one holds the bed panel and the roof together. And then that one there, it holds the roof, also a rubber clamp there. Okay, and then the other side. step and then essentially just push on the backing the roof basically opens up by itself right there's the basin frame get to the basin just now basin frame up there and always remember to put the bracket back in place so you don't lose it right so then you get in and you'll start on the front just push up Gas trucks take over and it opens awesome, awesome lights off. Okay, this happens outside. So, we go to the front bed. Make sure your handbrake, handbrake is pushed back and your jockey will clamp and also turn back to the back. Release the A frame stabilizer or stand. It slots in there. Put your safety pin in place. And with regards to getting the tent out, always start from one side. It's easier when one person actually does it. Start from one side, get out the frame, pull it, pull it over towards you, and then get out the whole tent. So, put setting up the tent, put a leg that pushes into that clamp there. Right on the other side. Go. Then, pull the tent over the base. Got an elastic band that tensions the tent. There. And then elastic band with a knot in it around the back. Same with the other side. Okay. So very attached. That's it. If you have extra tie down points or strap down points for the tent to pull tight, so there's two in the, in, on the sides and one on the, on the front. Okay. Then we just pull our fly sheet back, make it straight. Okay, then we'll put in the spring rods. So the spring rods they usually stay next to the fridge. Okay. There will be five of them that you use on the front bed. Start in any way that you like. Just be careful of not scratching your unit. Make sure you look at where you put the peg in, or the spring rod in.
Next, we'll just put the bed into place. Um, easiest that I can suggest to help make up the bed. Uh, if you struggle with that, open up the front, the front uh, mosquito net and canvas. And then you can access the bed from here as well, which is it to help make up the bed. Okay. So just basically put the mattress in its place. Look at the mattress, there are a thicker part and a thinner part on the mattress and then also you have your cutout. So the cutout is so that it can clear this bump here, that's where the tent folds open or the bed panel folds open. So just make sure on your levels, you'll see now the interior level is higher than the exterior level which folds out. So make sure you've got the thicker part on the front, okay. So just put it in there, put your base down. Mattress in place. Okay, make sure it's nice to flat. There you go, there's your mattress. So, the kiver, the seating area sits on the side. So, you've got a nice open window uh, that can open up canvas and mosquito net. And also, you've got a solid panel that closes down. Front bed is a queen size, uh, it's 185 by 1 1.5, uh, the mattress length. And yeah, so standard queen. And that's the unit set up on the bedding. With regards to the awning, we'll do that quickly. So just make sure you close your door so you can access or swing the awning around over the door. Keep your kitchen closed. Zip up your bag. You see one clip holds just the wing, the other clip holds the poles and the wing. So release the one first, so that you can take the poles off. Get out one of your long poles. There's two of them, they're identical, so you can't really mix them up. Just put it down on the floor. Release the last clip. First rope, first arm. The one we walk back with, okay? So as you walk around, just be careful that you don't pinch your awning bag here. Make sure you tuck it in behind the awning bracket. So you don't have any pinching or any material pinching in between that bracket there, okay? If you open the awning and you know you're definitely going to be putting on your side panels. You want the first arm that you're putting to the back to be open a little bit. Mustn't be tensioned all the way. Uh, keep it loosely tensioned just like this, okay? So what we want to do, we want the canvas move to the front first so that we can take up the tension to the front, okay? So we open up the front arm. And then grab it on the pull handle or pull strap there and you pull it over. You want this seam to be level with this arm. That allows you to get your side panel alignment correct there. So make sure it's pulled over. Okay. If you're happy with that, get that pole that you put down on the floor. First one you check out. And we start from the front. So the furthest away from the bush lapper. It's an Aussie clamp system. So just pull it tight and twist lock. We go and then drop down the first leg. So, okay, then we tension the rear. Okay. So, you go around the top one. Around the bottom one, pull it tight. Make sure that arm is as close as you can get it to the body. And then, look on there. And then just give it a last push. And there you go. Okay. That's basic setup on the awning. If you're going to be stationary for lunch, that's all you have to do. If you're going to be standing for a afternoon or late uh, sleeping over or weekend, I would suggest putting in all the poles. So we're going to quickly do that.
Are you second long pole? Goes in the back. Then you've got three shorter poles. Okay, and they go in between the rest of us. You'll also see there's one pole that's got a, a felt patch on it. That just stops the door from scratching on the pole, so we'll show you now where that goes, but that's the last one you put in. Okay. And then the one with the felt patch, that's the one that goes here by the spare wheel. Okay. Drop down your legs. Take all your legs down when they drop down. Make sure the awning is su supported and uh, secured. Then you tilt up your wind brackets, or they give them a bit of an angle on the on the tent already. And then we install what we call the rain poles. Which are these five guys. So you've got two shorter ones, three longer ones. So the rule of thumb, long ones by the long poles, short ones by the short poles. Okay, so we start in the front. Up it in, swivel up. Okay. Okay, Last part of the awning is just to fold in your strips, and then you've got a Velcro, Velcro tab there and a Velcro tab at the top. Just fold over your bag, and that just makes it nice and neat. And everything's out of the way. Okay. There's your slide up tray with your stove. Cut it in the top drawer usually. And pots and pans in the bottom drawer. Okay, so to continue on the awning setup, we're just going to quickly show you how to install the side panels. I'm not going to put everyone up, but it, it works the same on all the units. Um, so this will be on the Kiever, the Miskrayer, and the Bosch Creek, which is the Gocha range. Uh, on the Baybab and Rattle, you've got one side panel more, so there's extra one. So let's start with the most important ones, or the ones that we know the clients use often. Okay, so your bag of side panels are included. Um, so we'll start from the top. So as you take them out, you will just try and find your zip or the slider. You'll see there's a color code. So this is like a, a khaki green color or olive green type color. Then you go to your awning. And then as you walk around, you'll just see all your indicators. So there's like a royal blue. Uh, here's a gray one or charcoal. And then this will be your olive green or khaki color. Okay. So to show you guys how they work, let's quickly zip it up. So they don't use Velcro, we use zips on all of them. So there where your two colors meet up, that's where you will start, okay? So we start there, line up the two sliders. Just get, up, get the slider to start there. Okay, as long as you've got tension on that, you can start to pull on the zip. you down to get the corners nicely and neat in pull over the flap on the awning zip it up to the stopper and then just when you're done you fold it back down that covers the zips okay i've got velcro tabs that hold them on the on the poles or the down poles on the legs okay so that's the first side panel, then we'll quickly get the, the triangular panel that includes into that system, or ties in. Okay. 
So, also in your awning bag, for a lack of a better word, the triangular panel that will feed into your extrusion that's installed next to the body. So it feeds in there. Fit it in all the way to the top. Okay. A little bit too far. Fold back your awning bag, or you can roll it up nice and neat. Fold that triangular over, or that uh, Velcro over. And then Velcro down all the way there. And that will attach with the zip. And then close this corner. So now essentially what's happening, you've got coverage for your fridge. That's why most guys use this side panel. So your fridge is in the shade all day. It also helps with wind and stuff on the stove. Okay. The next important important uh, flat that you'll use creates a part of your gutter system. So it's like a long um, strip with a cutout on the one side. It slides in the top there. So that stops any roll off of water coming into your door. Okay. So we'll start from the kitchen side. Feed it in there. Feed it in all the way to where the extrusion and the, the rope section will stop there. Just fold back your bags and all the flaps, just fold it in, and then you basically just pull it over. And that creates a seal up there for you. Okay, so that's the most important ones. I know on the Pochar range or on the Kiever and Boschik and Miskere, a lot of people like to use these two panels as well because your door is here, just to give you a bit of privacy. Depends on the type of camping you do. And that's it. The rest of the panels, um, side panels, as I said, you just find your panel, find your zip, and there's your color code. So that's your gray one or your charcoal one, that will be the next panel. And they zip from the, from the front of the unit all the way around, and they leg to leg. So one panel is one leg to leg. And then they go all the way to the back. It covers everything that's awning. You've also got a draft skirt at the bottom that covers the bottom. So it will enclose the bottom of the unit. And that's all included in the unit's price. Thank you. I'll show you guys how to install the draft skirt that forms a part of your side panels on the Kiever, the Boschkrieg, and the Miskrieg. So it encloses everything at the bottom of the unit. Okay. It's one long one. On the bigger units, the Biobab and the Rattle, they are two parts. Okay. So it's one long sheet. Slide it from the front, just slide it in there, you'll see there's a velcro tab running down there, those two velcros meet up and basically seal up there, so as you go around the unit you'll just feed it in all the way, Okay, make it nice, make sure it's nice and straight. Okay, then just close your bottom door. Okay, so it goes to the back corner and then it will tie into your last panel that attaches to the body here and it closes the unit. The last part on the draft skirt is a bag that hang hangs over the wheel. Okay, that just slides in there and that just covers all the cavities or all the wind that will cover or come from the back of the unit past the wheel. Okay, so yeah, again, as I said, 
bags. So three bags, you can chuck a few things in there. And the nice thing is it is it gives you a nice enclosed feeling, nice and comfy. There's your kitchen back out again. Thank you. Hello, hello. It's Mitch again from this Uh Quick uh, video on how to set up the giver table. Um, so essentially, it becomes a small bed or a seating area, like a small couch, to where they just sit here during the day. Um, if you want to sit and get stuff out of the cupboard, it works nice. Uh, it is a small bed. It's 1.3 uh, by 700, so a small kid can still sleep here. Uh, if you want to take a travel companion like a dog, if, it's a way, if the park allows, take a dog with, uh, you've got that option. Um, so to set up, it's basically just take out the two uh, back rests, lift up the table, just get your leg, leg just slides into the allocate in the place, in there, okay, and then you'll basically slide in your table, so it slides into that bracket. Okay, just make sure, push it all the way down. And you've got a nice seating area that you can sit and work at or drink some tea if the weather's bad or do what you want to do, okay? When you travel, we prefer to have the table set down and then also it will store your front bed mattress on here. And that's essentially it. All right, so if you want to have another option on this and you don't like the table, you just want a bit more space inside, you can always remove the table and then use this as a lounge. So you can put the table in your vehicle, or you can leave it at home. So that's out of the way. You've just got a nice seating area for two people. Um, so it gives you a bit more room inside also. With regards to packing space with the setup, um, got a nice storage box down here that you can put drinks and stuff in. And then on the other side, it's essentially batteries. Um, so we install two deep cycle batteries standard with the units. And then your fuse system. So if we do any electrical upgrades like uh, DC to DC chargers or MPPT controllers, bigger ones, or external solar, we'll install it all in here. Yeah. Okay, so we'll break it back down. And then we're going to quickly break down the unit for you guys. Okay. Quickly do the breakdown on the Kiever. Uh, Boss Creek, Muscara are essentially the same. Uh, Kiever again just has the front bit, not the side bit like the Muscara or the Boss Creek, so it's a little bit different. Uh, but essentially it works the same. Um, so we're going to start with the awning. Then we'll do the bed, get the beds ready out the way, the mattresses out the way. And then we start with the tent first and then we close the roof. So we're just going to do it in sequence again. So I break down, we usually start from the back working to the front. Okay. So make sure all your flaps and side panels and everything has been removed. You've got space to work, close all your panels and your doors. Just to have easy access to everything. Okay. So first thing, take out all your rain balls. Okay, make sure you put down all your wind poles. Don't forget them. Okay, so as I said, we work it from the back to the front. These can stay in the pole bag that goes, uh, that all the long poles go in as well. I prefer to keep them separate, it's just easier to get them out the back. So for now, I'm just going to put them in the kitchen. Okay, make sure you release the bag again and then lift all your legs. Then remove all your cross members. There's one. Remember, the first thing that you did uh, will be the last thing that you do when you open the awning and close the awning. The first thing we did was put this pole in, drop this leg down, so this will stay till last. So we can move this one. Okay. It's a bit windy, just have your partner support this on. If it's not too windy, it can hang by itself. If you do have the extended wing on the bigger units, don't have it hanging like this. 
Make sure someone supports this corner. Only have the spell removed. Okay. Very important step on the morning is to fold this arm underneath all the canvas. Okay. The reason being, you want this arm to have no material or no canvas in between this arm and this box. Okay. You don't want any rubbing of the material here. So, fold it in. Okay. Might not stay there. Sorry. Release the back end. Okay. And then it will fold in on itself. Okay. And then just swing it around. There. Okay. First thing, take this uh, long corner or long triangle up to your left hand. And then just hold it as tight as you can. Always clip the front one first. The B in it says three, so we'll use the middle one. Right? Push up on the awning and just take up the tension. Don't pull hard on the clips. They just need to keep the awning in place. They're not there to tighten the awning down. Put your pole bag. so you don't pinch anything in the zip and then just pull your bag over okay next step will be to take the mattress out the way so the bedding and the mattress I'll go to the inside. Okay, easiest way to get this mattress out is to take it in the one corner on the seam where it folds and just pull up. As it folds over, keep twisting the mattress and then just get it out that hole. Okay, slide the mattress down into position on the side. Alrighty, and the rest will happen from the outside. Next step will be removing all your spring rods. Make sure you put them back in the bag while you're busy with them and back in the position next to the fridge. Good, so you don't lose them. Okay, then we'll start from the back, release the tent, make sure I unclip all the clips. Okay, lift up on the tent, get one of the legs out, and then you'll fold the leg in. Push the tent over a little bit to the one corner, so it feels like you're pulling the whole tent over this way. And then, same with the other one. Get it in. Just make sure it goes into the hole and you don't have any tents on the outside. Okay? The important part to be careful for when you close your bed panel, make sure you don't pinch the tent in between here. So just close it slowly. I'll show you guys how to check for that. Lift up, hold it over, just put it down softly. Okay, what you want to do, just go to the side, lift up on the panel again, just make sure the tent folds in. So you want the tent to be inside this cavity here. Okay. This side. Okay. The safety pin in place. And then we close the roof from the inside. So closing the roof, we start from the rear to the front. It sounds a bit funny, but that's the way it works. It keeps it a bit more stable. I'm 
I'm going to pull down on the roof. So you've got a grab handle there, just pull down. As you pull down, make sure you pull all the tent in so you don't have any tent sticking out on the outside being pinched and stopping the rubber from sealing. Okay, same with the front. Pull down, make sure you pull in all the tents. Nothing that sort of gets pinched in between the rubbers. Final check all around, just to make sure you don't pinch any rubbers. So you want the rubber to be able to seal all the way around. That looks good. Okay. Then you can clip all our clips. After the first one, huh? Is that all not safe? Stop. No, I didn't stop. I was going to do it. Can I do it? We'll do the rear first and then the front. Okay. Last thing with all of our units, you don't have to climb on the nose box to reach any of your clips. Even with the taller units, you should be able to reach. Um, if need be, you're a little bit short, you can just get a stick. Um, last resort is to get up the nose box. Okay. And then we close all the rest of the panels. And we take out our jacks. Make sure you put this bracket back, don't forget it, you're going to lose it, and then just clip your door in. So with regards to the door clips, there's two of them, so you'll just clip in, lock it in place, same with the other side. And then you shut your door, and swing your push lever locks or push locks 180, and that's it.